Hello there, I'm Black Bright. It's May and it's not very warm today, so I'm kind of wrapped up a little bit today. But yes, welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you know the drill. Thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, share, interact. Um, I wanted to talk about um, this hoo-ha about the Chinese now owning 100% of um, Kingston Airport. And I just wanted to put my little take on it. Um, as usual, I read from my notes so I don't miss out any important bits. But as you can imagine, it must feel quite threatening when you think that your country is being owned by someone else. Just going to put my phone on silent, which I thought I did before, but I didn't. So do not disturb me. So let's have a little background. Um, Chinese represent approximately 1.2% in Jamaica. Um, I'm not quite sure how long ago those st statistics were, so don't quote me on that. Uh, Chinese first arrived in Jamaica on the 30th of July 1854 after the yellow fever broke out in Panama. And apparently Jamaica was deemed the most convenient island for them to come to. And when they came over, they came over as indentured slaves and servants and labourers and rice growers. And it's ironic how they've turned things around. Um, by 1932, 6,000 Chinese had immigrated to Jamaica um, and forward march to 2020. China is the largest official creditor in the world, surpassing official lenders like the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and all OECD creditor governments combined. So no wonder they're not reporting when they don't feel like reporting, because they're like, listen, we're better than you. Why do we need to report to you? Apparently there's um, a Paris something or other, and another, another um, organisation that collates all the information about who borrows what from whom, but China doesn't report on it. So their, their figures of who they lend to, how they lend, what the conditions are, are all underreported. So China is a major lender with outstanding claims exceeding more than 6% of the global GDP in 2017. And that's probably increased three years later. China extends loans to developing countries, but because of systematic underreporting, no one has a complete picture of how much is owed to them and under what conditions. Most of China's loans are at market rates and collateral backed. And you know what that means? That means they'll loan you money, but if you don't pay up, they get what you have loaned. So if supposing they loan you, say, 200000 for a house, you default on the house, they take the house. Similarly, if they give you goodness knows how many billions for a portion of your country, you default, they take that portion of the country. All their loans are collateral backed. If they, if they are not getting what they loan their money on, then you're not getting the loan. And that's why a lot of countries end up in the position that they are in, including Jamaica. And I'll come to that in a minute. Um, I'll put here, I understand Jamaica's concerns, but every country in the world owes money to every other country and every country is owed money by other countries. The only thing is, is that when you are in a position of indebtedness, and when you take freebies like China has given um, the Chinese, the Chinese, the Children's Hospital in Montego Bay as a gift for all the business that they've been doing, when you become indebted, that is why um, people can disrespect you if they are not morally. Not everybody would do that. Not everybody who you are in a position of indebtedness to is going to take advantage and disrespect. But it does appear from what we see that the Chinese 
are disrespecting Africans, they're disrespecting people in different parts of the world, especially those people who they feel they own because they own the country or they own a good part of the country. And that is what the situation is. It's fine for Africa to say to Chinese now, get out, get out, we don't want you here, because um, China is kicking out um, black people in their country and closing down their businesses. But those people in China, they don't owe China. They don't, they haven't lent money to um, China. The difference is, is that um, a lot of African countries are billions in debt to China. So China feels as though they have a right to behave in a certain way. And that's not right. You might own the country or you might own portions of the country, but you don't own the people. And if you've got an issue with the indebtedness of the country, you take that up with the government. Start disrespecting the heads of government, not the workers who've got nothing to do with it. And a lot of them don't even know how indebted their country is to the Chinese. And that is the situation. I don't think a lot of Jamaicans might not have known that the Chinese were running Kingston Airport long before they bought it. For 30 years, they had a 30-year concession agreement, which means they had rights to the land, rights to the property, and all sorts. So at the end of 30 years, if they, want, if they feel like now, okay, um, you're in all this debt to us, um, if you want to offload some of your debt, We'll just take the airport. What could Jamaica say? They've put themselves in a position where they are indebted by billions to China. And not only Jamaica. There's countries all over the world. And I'm going to let you know who they are in a minute. So UK owes China $267 billion which translates into 15% of the UK debt. As part of the Jubilee debt campaign, African countries owe China over... Oh, I didn't put the amount of billions. How silly. Anyway, they own billions. Oh, how did I miss that out? Anyway, they own billions. As at 2018... What's it say? Oh, I'm not even going to try and remember. How did I lose that out? That's going to bug me, that is. Um. Anyway, can't find it. So what I what I will say to you that um that the following countries owe China 25% of their GDP, and that's Djibouti, Niger, Republic of Congo. There's also Kyrgyzstan, Laos, Cambodia, Maldives. They owe um, China also 25% or thereabouts of their GDP. America owes China $1.27 trillion in US treasuries um no they owe 1.2.7 in u.s treasuries to japan and 1.09 trillion in u.s treasuries to china this is america so if you can imagine if these massive countries like america and the uk owe china so much what say jamaica the only thing is, is that I think the deals are different with the UK and the USA than they are with the developing countries. I have a funny feeling that these collateral back loans don't apply to the UK and the USA. They only apply to developing countries who are less likely to be able to pay back the loan at the end of the term. And what happens in return? They get to own that aspect of the country or whatever it is they've invested in. You know, they've done all this belt, silk and belt road initiative and 
they're built, you know, the infrastructure of um, certain parts of Jamaica, you know, all of that. When Jamaica, when 10 years turns around, I mean, that's in, I think it's 2028, when the loan is due to be paid up and Jamaica hasn't got it. What do you think is going to happen? And with regard to the Northwest Road, the road, that highway that leads from Ocherias, from Kingston to Ocherias, and you can get there in about an hour. China is saying, OK, you know, we'll um, we'll get the money back off that from the tolls. Ten years worth of tolls. Thirty two US dollars. That's how much it is. How many locals are going to be able to pay 32 US dollars to get from Ocherias to Jamaica? And so what's going to happen is they're not going to make enough money for those tolls to pay back China in eight years' time. And that time is going to come around. By the time you look around, it's here. And what's going to happen? China ends up opening the road, uh, owning the roads. You can't blame China. You can't blame the Chinese. Who do you blame? You blame those who have put you in, in an indebted situation. Now, Jamaica, like a lot of islands, have gone independent. But how independent are they? They're not independent at all. You're dependent on bloody China and America. I forgot to look up how much um, Jamaica owes America. But it's enough that they owe, they owe so much to China. Anyway, unreported lending from China has grown more than US 200 billion as at, 200, as at 2016. But if it's underreported, I don't know how they get that figure. So with that background, it is not surprising that China has seen Jamaica as an island they want to invest in. The government, of course, is complicit in all the loan schemes because China only lends on what they can have if the lender defaults. So when an island like Jamaica owes China $79 billion, it is no wonder they have to hand over the Sangster Airport after a 30-year concession agreement with them. That pays um, US dollars $814.78 million of the debt. That's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm thinking that because Jamaica owns Chinese so much and then China was managing Sangster Airport anyway. And now they've, you know, the end of the, the I guess it's the end of the 30 year concession agreement. They're now owning it outright. It must have something to do with this collateral backed um, policy that they have with Jamaica. And they, I mean, if the Mexicans didn't own Montego Bay, which is the largest airport in Jamaica, China probably would have jumped on that. But the Spanish sold it to the Mexicans, so they can't have that. Unless they decide to sell it to the Chinese, you never know. China owns most half of, or owns almost half of Jamaica's debt, as at June 2015 which means China is entitled to the equivalent in collateral. Every aspect of Jamaica that China has loaned them money for has the potential of being owned by China, if Jamaica defaults on the payments. So 90% of loans from China are to be repaid by 2028, that's 90% of Jamaica's loans to China. Is this a feasible arrangement? 90% of all those billions, and goodness knows how many trillions in 10 years. And especially now, we've got a bloody lockdown, which is, means there's no, um, what do you call it? No tourism, no import exports. And depending on how long it lasts. So you can't blame the Chinese for being entrepreneurial and addressing a need. Because what they've done is they've gone to Jamaica and they've thought, mm, this is a beautiful country, you know, but the roads don't look too good. And 
you know, this isn't very conducive for this, this isn't conducive for that. You know, we have some money, why don't we invest in Jamaica and make it even better? And then, of course, Jamaica wants their island to look, well, the Jamaican government, I don't think Jama the Jamaican people are too concerned, but the Jamaican government wants their island to look better, more westernised, so they think, oh yeah, let's um, let's take this money from China. Let them fix up the place and to make it. You see what's why it's attractive. You see how the Chinese are clever. They actually do the work. So you know, if you go to, if you're borrowing money from the IMF, from the International Monetary Fund, say for example, or the World Bank, they lend you the money, but you have to do the work. But what Chinese are saying is that look, we'll lend you the money. We'll bring our people over and we'll also offer your people some work. We'll do all the work. We'll build the roads. We'll build the refinery. We'll build the aluminium plant. All of that kind of stuff. But these are the conditions. And so Jamaica thinking, boy, that means, say, you know, we don't even have to worry about anything. They're actually going to not only going to loan us the money to build up the country, they're actually going to do the work. The disadvantage there is, is that they're not employing, well, this is what I've heard, they're not employing engineers and technicians and Jamaica, you know, high-level Jamaican um, staff or employees. It seems as though they're only employing the labourers and then they're bringing their um, high-leveled or their skilled workers over from China. So the Jamaicans in, you know, the, the skilled Jamaicans are not benefiting from all these so-called employment opportunities. And even the labourers, it's, it's a, as a few, I guess they're probably thinking, oh, well, you know, we said we're going to offer them some work. Let's just take on about 10 or 20 or 30 just to show that we've done our part. And the rest of Jamaicans are without work. Whereas if they were um, fair, or if the Jamaican government had stipulated, look, yes, we're going to have this agreement. Yes, we want you to build up the infrastructure of our roads. But what we would like is 80% of your employees must be Jamaican. And then the remaining 20% you can bring over from China. That would have been a fair arrangement. Then you know that your, your, um, your indigenous people are benefiting from the rebuilding of the country. But when you have um, the Chinese coming over and they're only using a small a minority of Jamaicans and then the rest of the workers are majority of Chinese, then of course it's going to build up resentment and bitterness. But once again, I say, you know, I say, you have to know who to point the finger at. China Merchant Port Holdings have been managing Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited, otherwise known as KFTL, under a 30-year concession agreement with the government of Jamaica, which means that China Merchant Port Holdings were granted rights, land and property by the government of Jamaica under certain terms and conditions. So the deal includes eight terminals. Eight terminals, you know. Montego Bay, like I said before, is managed by a Mexican company under a similar 30-year concession. Companies called Grupo Aeroporterio del Pacifico. Heathrow Airport in the UK is owned by South Africa, 25%. I'm just drawing the parallels. So it's not just, oh, Jamaica, they've sold us out. They've sold our airport. It's not unique to Jamaica. Heathrow Airport, which is the UK airport, is owned by South Africa, 25% of it is owned by South Africa, 20% is owned by Qatar, Canada owns 12.6%, Nigeria owns 11.20%, and 
and USA owns 11.18%. If that doesn't add up to 100, I don't know what the other percentage is. So I was wondering, is the issue um, with regard to um, the Chinese having full control of Stankster Airport to do with the fact that it's the Chinese that have control over it? Would they be upset if it was any other um, country, like like I said, um, Norman Manley is owned by um, Mexicans? Is that an issue? Or would they just prefer, like in America, Jamaica, America's airports are owned by the state, they're locally controlled and some of them are publicly owned. Would they have preferred um, Jamaica, the um, Kingston Airport, Sangster Airport, to be owned by Jamaicans? Is the fact that it's actually Chinese that have full control of it that has the problem? And then, of course, you it's exacerbated by the fact that, you know, Chinese seem to be having priority over the shops and the wholesale shops and their, you know, they can build up all their shops, but, you know, the little person on the ground can't manage it and they're being outpriced and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just putting it out there. It's just a question. Um, all US airports, all US commercial airports are owned and operated by public entities, um, local, regional or state authorities except one. I think in Jamaica, it's not only about China buying a large part of the island, but the fact that China does not employ skilled Jamaicans for work. They use skilled Chinese and only a few Jamaican laborers. So while the Chinese say their investments are creating job opportunities, the Jamaicans are utilized disproportionately. So Alpart in Jamaica was sold for US dollars 299 million to Chinese state-owned entity, the Jiquan Iron and Steel Company. China also invested US dollars 1.5 billion to establish an industrial zone in co-located with um, aluminia facility in St. Elizabeth, name N-A-I-N, over a four-year period allegedly creating 3,000 new jobs, but for who? Is that 3,000 people from St. Elizabeth or are they indigenous Jamaicans? You see, sometimes when people are signing contracts, they don't break it down. They just look at the big picture. Why? You know, they'll get, what, 299 million? That'd be brilliant for Jamaica. And then they're offering 3,000 jobs. Yeah, let me just sign on the dotted line. And they're not thinking, well, 3,000 jobs. I wonder who's going to get those 3,000 jobs and actually discuss those 3,000 jobs. Who's actually going to benefit? Does the government do that? Or are they blindsided by the billions, you know, the dollar sign? Can't blame the Chinese for ser um, serving opportunities. Blame the government for being in a vulnerable position and seeking the Chinese leg up as a way to stabilise the country and economy because that is how the government views it. The government views it as though they're getting a leg up. They're stabilising the country. Um, Jamaica was having a rocky time. They was, you know, really um, high on GDP. And now they kind of feel as though, look, you know, China's giving us a leg up. We've got Chinese here anyway. They don't they don't feel as though they're going to get stiffed, even though they are going to be stiffed, because they'll be majorly stiffed if they can't pay this loan back. And how are they going to do that within such a short period of time? So I think working class Jamaicans will have to create their own world within Jamaica. Jamaica has been using Chinese concessional loans to upgrade the road network um, in the sum of 384 US dollars, 384 million US dollars. 
Chinese also built and financed the North and South Highway for $730 US million. US million. $730 million US dollars. It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Connecting Kingston to Ocho Rios, reducing the coast-to-coast -coast trip, the transit time to one hour, or approximately one hour. And so another debt um, Jamaica owes to China. This project gives China Harbour Engineering Company, which built the highway, a 50-year concession to recover its cost from tolls. Well, maybe over 50 years they'll be able to um, recover the tolls. But like I said, you know, they should have it priced so that local people can afford to use it. And you're more likely to get more that way. What's the point of paying one $32 when if it's for like $5, you're going to have about six ten. Goodness knows how many local Jamaicans because they're going to be able to afford it. So sometimes you have to ask yourself, these pricings, is it done deliberately to outprice so that they know that at the end of it, the debt isn't going to be cleared? And once again, they own the property. What's the government? They're going to think 50 years, I'm not even going to be alive. What do I care? The generations that you know, the future generations, but what about them? That is a selfish mindset. The project, oh, I've already said that, haven't I? Yeah. Rumours are that Jamaicans are to be taught Chinese in school. So what does that tell you? Um, and Children's Hospital in Montego Bay was a gift for China, from China um, for all the deals that they've done with them. Chinese dread enough. Well, they're business people. They don't get where they've got by not having a business mind. You have, They have to get something back. And that is how you learn from people who are successful who are successful you learn from people what is it instead of running down and being resentful what is it what methods do they use that we could use maybe not on such a grand scale but it's like you know if even something simple that collateral backed way of loans what you could do now is if you're going to lend somebody ask you for money and then say, listen, you know, I'm money, you know, I'm broke. Lend me your money, you know? And you'd say, either you lend it or you don't. But why not use that same Chinese philosophy and say, look, if I lend you money, what are you gonna what am, what can I hold as collateral until I get it back? They might have a decent watch. They might have a decent chain. If you can't get the collateral equivalent to the loan, you don't lend the money. That's a learning point, isn't it? I mean, even if you if, even if you don't learn anything else from the Chinese, but that you've learned something. Ah, so Jamaica is up on the stock market, market, but who would benefit? So, yeah, I do understand. Jamaicans are possessive of their island. I mean, Jamaica, I mean, they're so proud of their island. So proud of their island. And they thought that it might be at some point no longer Jamaican, but Chinese must be quite daunting. But keep the faith, Pete. See what you can learn from whoever is a little bit higher than you, you can always learn something. And that's what this life is about. Instead of, you know, getting all angry and mad, say, what can they, what can they teach me? What can I learn from these people? Watch them, see how they operate. And you notice with the Chinese, they come over as very humble, you know, some of them. I don't know about those wicked ones, but some of them, they come over so humble and quiet and 
but on the same token, you can't mess with them. Whereas Jamaicans tend to be on the opposite. You know, they're not, not generalising, but a lot of Jamaicans can come over as looking aggressive and mean and go on bad. And yet, look what happens. Somebody meek and mild like the Chinese can just take you over. There's nothing you can do about it. So it's about learning from other people. Learning what can benefit you as an individual and what can benefit you as a community, what can benefit you as a society, nationally, regionally, and then ultimately globally. That's all for now. Bye-bye.